So, quick recap. In the last video, we talked about the positioning of your 3D print and how that affects things, where all those dimensions will cause structural strain, support material, their uses, their pros and cons, the layer height and resolution of your 3D print. And those are a lot of important things as well. But in the second part, we're gonna talk about other things like how do you stick it to the bed if you don't have a lot of surface area? So sometimes if your print has a lot of surface area, like your, your coaster here, you use a skirt. A skirt doesn't touch the 3D print, it just primes the nozzle because like on a hot glue gun, you have to pull the trigger a couple times so that you can get the glue flowing again. The same thing applies to 3D prints. Material will ooze out the end because of the last 3D print that happened and it, it just needs to prime the nozzle. So that's what the skirts do, just draws a couple lines, perimeters around it, gets the nozzle going, and then it starts your print. Now, if your object has a little less surface area to stick to the base, say using making this little bowl right it has a rim on the bottom it has a little rim on the bottom it's a fairly good amount of surface area but you just you want to make sure it doesn't fall off the bed in that case you have to put a brim and what a brim is is it's like the brim of a hat except it, it makes the footprint of the 3d print a little wider so it's like a skirt, but it spirals all the way and connects to the surface layer, the first layer, and it gives it a bigger footprint to stick to the bed. A lot of the time, that's all you really need. But in the case that the only amount of surface area you have is that little point. In that case, you need to use a raft. What a raft does is it takes the perimeter like a brim, builds a couple layers for it to print on. It builds a platform and then it prints that first layer and melts it into it. So you could give this tiny little dot a big platform to stick to where this would then melt into the first layer. Now, this example specifically would be still not likely to print successfully. However, if you had something like this that had these four points of contact right here, like my hand, then it would be more likely to print because all those are now adhered to the bed through the raft. So they all have their different pros and cons. A skirt you use on everything. You never have nothing. You always have to have something. So you have a skirt, it uses very little filament. It's really fast and it doesn't connect to the print. A brim uses a little bit more filament. It prints pretty fast and the separation is usually just peeling it off. And the raft, it uses a large amount of filament because it has to build a whole platform and print speed takes a little bit longer because it has to print the whole layer like three times based on how many layers you give the raft. And then the separation is kind of difficult in certain circumstances. So if I was to print this thing on a raft, I would basically just get a double thick coaster because I'm not getting that off. But if I had the hand on a raft, then pulling that off would be fairly easy because I just have to separate it from each finger and it would pop right off. And then you just throw the raft away. Next is infill, and this is really what changes the amount of time and how strong your print is going to be. So, you'd think that the more infill you get, the stronger you get, and to a point that is true. However, if the infill you have goes higher than about 50%, it starts not being effective anymore. It's about as strong as a solid part. So your only strength increases are from about 10 to 50% and above that you might as well just print it 100%. So you have a steep increase in the strength and then it just levels off. So the usual infill density to print at is about 20%, 25, that's what most programs default at. And then if you need a lot of strength, go about 50% and then that's about it. If you need like a watertight solid mass, then go for 100, but you don't usually need that usually leave it about 20%. And also, it takes a lot longer to print more infill because there's more plastic and it gets a lot heavier. If you have, say, this object, this little launcher printed at 10% infill, it's going to be really, really light, but fragile. But if I was to print the same thing at 50%, it'd be a lot stronger, but also a lot heavier. So based on whatever you're printing, you have to make sure you have the right settings set up. Also, there's not just one pattern. There's not just one shape. There are hundreds of different shapes that have been developed. The most common are zigzag lines, grid, and honeycomb, and triangular. So they all have their different applications. The most commons for most other prints are grid and triangular, just 
a lot of good strength there, and they're rather quick. You would want to use zigzag lines, these ones down here, on TPU prints or prints you want to be bendy, because since there's no strength on that vertical axis, there's no connection there, it would want to collapse that way. So use that on a bendy print. And then honeycomb, you only print with if you need something to be incredibly strong. A good combo would be a honeycomb PETG stress piece. So it's gonna be under a lot of force, a lot of stress. If you were to print that same thing in PLA with zigzag lines, it's gonna just snap immediately. So infill and the shape of your infill will determine what strength you have and what your result will be. Lastly is wall thickness. And this is the last one when it comes to setting up the print before you hit slice. If you have something that has a very thin wall, you're gonna get what looks like taking tissue paper and wrapping it around a box of wires. It's gonna deform the roof, it's gonna look really bad. If you have one that's only 0.8 millimeters or one loop around, because it does loops, it does one loop is weak, two loops is okay, three loops is pretty good, and four loops beyond that is just like on infill density. It just gets ridiculously strong and it becomes a waste of time at that point. So at 0.8, really weak, 1.2, pretty strong but pretty time consuming and then one is about the same as 1.2 but it's not as high strength so usually keep it around two to three wall lines and you should be pretty good so that is the last of the setup ones these last two are a little bit longer than the other ones however they need a lot of explanations because if you don't understand these topics you're not going to be able to get a really strong print, not a very strong result. And you need to understand it because it'll be helpful in the end. So beyond that, we're gonna talk about some other things and then we're going to run through a demo of how you actually slice something in the program Cura.